This is May the 8th, 2016. Our unit is entitled Fullness of Faith. Our, this is Lesson 10. And in our Pathway Study Guide, it is entitled Saying Thanks. And in our Standard Lesson Commentary, it is entitled Grateful Faith. Saying Thanks and grateful faith. Our devotional reading is out of the book of Colossians. It is the third chapter, verses 12 through 17. And our background scripture and our printed passage or our printed text is Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 19. And our key verse out of our lesson is Luke 17th chapter, verse 15. Our lesson's aims are to tell the story of the grateful Samaritan leper. Two, explain how gratitude can be a barometer of one's faith. And then we have a combined uh, activity. Write a prayer expressing gratitude. Our lesson today uh, centers around several issues. One is there is a group that are outcast among the larger community or the larger region. They are isolated and they are a outcast. They are ridiculed and mistreated because of who they are as a group of people. And we are speaking of the Samaritans. And the Samaritans were a intermixed group. They were not totally... Uh, one ancestry. They were a mixed breed of people. And the Jews uh, did not look with uh, appreciation or proudly upon these people because they were considered that they were mixed. Uh, therefore, they weren't 100% this or 100% that. And so, therefore they were looked down upon. Um, and they were outcast because of their racial identity. But our lesson also focuses on a group of individuals, 10 in number, who uh, among them, there is one individual pulled from the group, actually, who separates himself from the group because he returns to give thanks. And he is identified as a Samaritan. Uh, so this group has an illness, an incurable illness, the 10, and the illness is leprosy. And uh, to get a better idea as to what the... Uh, extent of this illness was if we would look in Leviticus the 13th chapter verses 1 through 46 it gives a clear understanding of how the illness was viewed what were the uh, treatments for it how was it addressed what were the responsibilities of the priest and uh, his uh, part of the process of diagnosing uh, what the illness was and how it was supposed to have been reacted to? What were the customs of the day as to people who were found with this incurable illness? How were the people around them, the priests, the community at large, how are they supposed to interact with this with these people who were found with this illness? 
And so as we f read further into the, the lesson, we find that the people were ostracized. They were isolated, even among their own family members for the sake that this incurable illness uh, could be transferred and passed on to other fa family members, and then they too would have to be removed from the village and the townships, uh, trying to prevent f from having a outburst of this illness. So even loved ones would have to part with members of their family, and they would have to be sent out to an area that was somewhat in a remote location away from interaction with the townships and the villages. Now, <clears throat> members of the family would still go and provide food items and care items for their loved ones, but it would be at a distance. And we receive a notion of how this interaction took place as how the lepers uh, responded once they re recognized that Christ was in the vicinity. Now, there is a geographical location as to the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Uh, it's about 25 miles north of Jerusalem, but greater than its geographical location is the symbolism, or I should say the discord that is associated with Samaria. Now, in John, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse, I believe in the King James Version, it says, and he must needs go through Samaria. Uh, in the New King James Version, it says, and he needed to go through Samaria. But the point here is, is that although these people and this area was despised and uh, looked down upon, Yet, it was a part of the completion of Christ's work that he must needs go through Samaria. Sometimes uh, we can create such tension and such a um, degrading attitudes towards a group of people until we cause them to feel unworthy, uh, low self-esteem, uh, no one cares about us, uh, we are not counted in the scheme of things. And yet, Christ feels that he must go through this area. Um, I, The text tells us that the... Uh, lepers that a part of the process of their cure was is that their family members would come and bring them food items and would see to it that uh, the certain needs that they uh, needed in order to care for themselves that periodically they would bring these items to them and uh, in the course of this exchange and this interaction, uh, they begin to find out that a healer is in the land, that the Messiah, the Lord, the healer is in the area. And so once they recognize that uh, a opportunity for them to be healed, an opportunity is present that there is someone whom from what they have heard would not turn a deaf ear to their need and to their issues. And so the text tells us 
that they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, a part of the lepers interaction with other people was is that they would stay a distance from them and a part of the custom was is that they would not say hello or they would not <coughs> they would not say shalom or the custom greeting but they would first yell unclean unclean to alarm or to alert those that were entering uh, their their vicinity or entering that area that we are lepers and keep your distance. So it lets us know that they are standing a distance from Christ and they somewhat lift their voices as though they shout out to Christ uh, that would he have mercy upon them. And Christ doesn't engage into a uh, discourse as to how did you become this way and what happened and so forth and so on. Sometimes when people ask for help, we begin a process of interrogation and we want to know uh, what happened. How did you get this way? What is it that you didn't do? Uh, how come you didn't avail yourselves to the opportunities that were present? Uh, uh, how did this happen to you? Uh, what has been your behavior? Uh, how, how, did, how did this disease fall upon you? What have you done that displeased the Lord that he would punish you in this way? And we go through a litany of different questions and what have you. But Christ simply says to them, when he saw them, go and show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So Christ recognizes the situation. And rather than go through 20 questions, he immediately arrives at what they had been hoping for to be healed. He didn't uh, deliberate. He didn't take up any unnecessary time. He knew exactly what was needed and provided that for them. And he said to go and show themselves to the priest as it was the custom uh, so that they could regain their interaction with the townships and the villages that they had been outcast of so that they could re re uh, again so that they could uh, come back to their families so that they could regain their lifestyles that were taken away from them because of the illnesses. So, Christ tells them, go and show yourselves to the priest so that you can once again be amidst, amidst the villages and the townships that you were driven out of. And also allow the priest to see that a healing has taken place outside of the synagogue outside of the care and the prayers of the priest that and and maybe we shouldn't say outside the prayers of the priest because the priests I'm sure were praying that these people were healed but recognize that it was beyond his scope of healing he was able to diagnose the illness as we see in Leviticus 13 but he was not able to cure it so Christ wants first of all for the healing to take place but uh, also for the priests who were presiding in those temples and synagogues at that time for them to recognize that a healing had even come to a group of outcasts who were also some Jews and some Samaritans 
and that it came to an area that was also looked down upon. So for those who sometimes feel as though they are locked out and no one is concerned, God is concerned. Now the text tells us that there were 10 who Christ healed and they were instructed to go and show themselves unto the priest. And as they followed the instructions of Christ, not after they arrived uh, at the synagogue or the temple where the priest was presiding, but as they began to walk and go towards the priest, they were cleansed. Uh, something here is ushering in a message that in the process of obedience to the instructions of the Lord, they were healed in the process, not at the conclusion of what they were instructed to do, but in the process they were healed. Now, we also know that Christ has the power to heal on the spot. So, uh, as a matter of fact, in Luke, the fifth chapter, verses 12 and 13, it speaks of a man and the scripture says that he was full of leprosy, but he saw Jesus and he fell on his face and he began to say, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And the text says in the 13th verse that he put out his hand and touched him. And the Lord said, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the man who was full of leprosy was cleansed. So we know that Christ has the power to heal immediately on the spot. But the inference here is, is that they were healed in obedience to what the Lord had instructed them to do. Now, the next verse tells us that one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now, all ten were healed, but only one of them turned around so that he could give thanks and show his appreciation and his gratitude to the Lord who had healed him. And the text tells us that he fell down on his face at the Lord's feet, giving him thanks. And when this took place, the 16th verse clearly tells us of his ethnicity, the one who returned. Uh, and it tells us that he was a Samaritan. And the Samaritan that ethnicity, that character of a person has been lifted before uh, in reference to the person who was overtaken or who was an attacked by uh, people along a road and <clears throat> he was left uh, for dead in a ditch or in a trench. And a priest and a Levite passed by, but a Samaritan, an outcast, a person who was already disassociated with the Jews because of who the uh, who they they were as a race of people, but someone who is already not included, somebody already discarded and looked down upon reaches out to help someone when we must ask the question, how many times have they been in need of help and yet they were denied. And you would think that 
this would cause a people to become hardcore where they would take every opportunity that was presented to avail themselves or to take advantage of others. And yet we find in two cases where the Samaritan reached out to help the person who had been harmed and gave of himself to pay for that individual to, to be cared for and to recover. And here we see that out of the group of 10, the one who comes back to give thanks is the Samaritan. And as a result of him coming back to give thanks, the scripture tells us that Christ said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. The key word here is thy faith have made thee whole. The other nine were healed, but the one was made whole. We have people with sicknesses who are healed, but all that are healed are not made whole. Now, we understand that the scripture says, thy faith, and we know that Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm sure that we can conclude that these lepers were hoping and praying that deliverance would come, that a healing would come. Now, we can see here that one of them was overwhelmed by the healing that took place. And then he put his faith into practice by thanking the one who healed him and made him whole. Uh, when we talk about hope and faith, and as we read Hebrews 11, uh, I would like to add to that. This is the exercising of that hope, which is a restoration of our faith. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? See, the leper, he was hoping for something that through his association with this illness, many had died from not being healed from this illness. But his hope was, is that there would come a healing and he would see it with his own eyes. But until that time, it was just hope because we don't hope for things that we already see. But the text in Romans, the eighth chapter, and I just read from the 24th verse, and now I'm reading to the 25th. It says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We continue to pray for it. We don't give up on it. We don't lose our hope for it. And therefore, our hope becomes the evidence of things not seen as we persevere to it. Now, when we begin to address that he was made whole, he had already received a healing. But in addition to his healing, he was made whole. And the translation of the word whole is, is that he was saved. Now, 
Saved is somewhat a word that has uh, religious overtones. It has religious connotations to it. And a lot of times when we speak of that, and I'm saying believers, and uh, when we uh, communicate with others and we talked about, well, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Well, it's like it's some type of... Uh, initiation or it's some type of a policy or something that uh, I have and, and you can't get it or it's like uh, you don't belong to the group that is afforded this type of reality but uh, when we really unfold salvation which is a part of the translation of this wholeness that this leper received. When we speak of being saved, it simply means that we've been delivered, that we are now in the safety of the Lord, that we've been preserved, that we are now, we've received soundness of mind, of thinking, because we are now in the safety of the Lord. We are in the Lord's protection. We're in the Lord's oversee. We are in the Lord's care. And we've been delivered from the things that would tear and destroy and decimate life and try and bring it to an end. And the one who has delivered us is the one who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So the others were healed. One was healed and made whole according to his faith that he acted upon. He showed his gratitude and his appreciation because he was healed. I would like to close our lesson with the reading of our devotional reading, Colossians, the third chapter, verses 12 through 17. And throughout uh, our Bible, at certain parts of the scripture, there is a break and there and there is a heading uh, preceding the verses that are coming uh, after that. And in this particular chapter of Colossians, uh, these verses come up under the heading of Christian living. And I would like to read them uh, for this lesson as a closing. Therefore, and this is the 12th verse, third chapter of Colossians. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to our Lord Christ Jesus. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We ask God's blessings upon you. And we hope that something that was said through the study of our Sunday school lesson 
would be fuel and comfort and confirmation for those who are listening. And most importantly, that we would not just be hearers of the word, but doers as well. God bless you.